the way that we choose to spend our time, what we choose to spend it doing, who we choose to spend it with is what makes up our life experience. Some of those choices or non-choices in some circumstances are some of the most important we'll make and we give them next to no thought. They literally create our life experience, the thing that is the most precious thing that we've ever been given. And many times we don't take the opportunity to sit down, get intentional and think about how we want to be making those choices, things that we may want to do differently, things that we may want to add or subtract or change in the coming year in order to create the life experience that we want to have. You're listening to episode 206 of the Building Psychological Strength podcast, where we uncover the information, tools, and techniques to turn our mind into our most valuable asset. The courage to face fears with persistence. Being able to be present enough in this moment to choose my response thoughtfully. We have the strength to bend to life stressors, to bend to adversity without snapping, without breaking. There are only six things that contribute to our quality of life, and they are all experiences. In every moment, we are deciding who we want to be and how we want to live our lives. Noticing what your brain is doing and then being able to make choices. Mobilize the things that we know lift us up. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Building Psychological Strength Podcast. My name is April and I'm your host. We've almost made it. It is almost. We are just short one day of making it through 2020. So can we all just take a moment and pat ourselves on the back? Are we out of the woods? No, not completely, right? The pandemic is still happening. We're still working on how the end of that will be. It doesn't look like it's going to happen in a flash of lightning. Instead, it looks like it's going to happen if you live in a in a climate that has four seasons, the way that winter ends. The snow slowly melts away. So it's not going to be one big band-aid rip. We're going to slowly get some reprieve, but we're not quite there yet. But can we just really congratulate ourselves for what we've made it through in 2020. It has been one heck of a year. So before I dive into anything else, sincerest congratulations on making it this far. We're almost there. For this episode, I'm really excited about the topic because as you know, life design is something that is incredibly near and dear to my heart. It's something that I use daily in my own life. And it's something that has the power to transform the life experience that we have. And again, as you know about me, I'm really passionate about the fact that we get one shot at that experience. This is not a dress rehearsal. And 2020, for better or worse, we're not getting it back. So as we look at it, did we have the experiences we wanted to have? Probably not. Did we make the best of what we had? Maybe, maybe not. But what we have right now is the opportunity to think about what we're going to do in 2021, how we want things to be different, things we might have learned along the way in 2020. And as cheesy as it is, some of these transition periods, these, you know, big transition periods between years or between quarters or seasons really provide us a good tangible time frame to commit to a little bit of reflection and a little bit of designing. And so that's what we are going to be working on today in one very specific uh, domain. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on something called a calendar audit. Now, if you think about it, the way that we choose to spend our time, what we choose to spend it doing, who we choose to spend it with is what makes up our life experience. Some of those choices or non-choices in some circumstances are some of the most important we'll make and we give them next to no thought. They literally create our life experience, the thing that is the most precious thing that we've ever been given. And many times we don't take the opportunity to sit down, get intentional and think about 
how we want to be making those choices, things that we may want to do differently, things that we may want to add or subtract or change in the coming year in order to create the life experience that we want to have. So today I'm going to be guiding you through with the help of Ashley, who's here as I'm babbling along watching her and <laughs> she's just quietly listening. <laughs> I'm supposed to interject or not till you introduce me and say that I'm here, but <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> We're both here. Um, we'll be leading you through a life design exercise centered around how we craft our time, a calendar audit. And if you don't, I realize the, the 30th of December may not be the ideal time for you to sit down and do this exercise. Mark in your brain that this episode exists though, and minimally go into your calendar sometime in the coming, I would encourage you to choose week or so. We'll mm -hmm. talk about why in a moment, sometime in the coming week, and block off a two hour period when you will sit down and do this exercise. This stuff is important. It's your life we're talking about. You should live it as though, you know, it, it means something to you because it should. So if you can't do this exercise right now, sit down, find some time in the coming week and come back to this episode. It's going to be here just like all of our episodes are. So you can always come back to it. So calendar audit. This is something that I've started doing. I started doing this probably three or four years ago. Um, I do it at max, I would say three times a year. Typically it's twice a year. Uh, it's always at this time for me because the new year is just a good marker in my mind. And what I've noticed is this is one of those sneaky ways that we teach ourselves that we are someone that we can depend on. If mm. you think about your relationship with yourself, that is a relationship that we cultivate like every other relationship in our life. And the more that you are there for yourself in the way that you're there for your friends and family and everybody else, the more that you are there for yourself, the more that you start to see yourself as someone you can trust and someone who's there for you and someone who's worthy, right? Oh like, yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, it, when you're setting aside that time and when you're putting in that effort and, and, you know, it's that whole talk is cheap or, um, actions speak louder than words. If you really want to build that relationship with yourself, you got to put some action behind it. And then you're showing that you can trust yourself that you are someone who is dependable, reliable, who follows through and someone who is worthy of time and effort and attention. It's good stuff. That's really good. You actually, something that you've said a lot too. I mean, we talk about it in other aspects of psych strength, but it certainly, certainly applies here is the power that our behavior has in training mm -hmm. our mind. Can you mm -hmm. talk about that just a little bit? Cause I think that that feedback loop is really important to hit yeah. before we dive in. I, I, I think one of the, like, probably fastest ways to explain it is if you think about it as experience is what programs your mind. So think about it like your, your belief system becomes like your operating system or the apps and the software that you've got installed. And it's experience that codes that, that creates that. Only in our, in our brains, there's no delete button. So you can't uninstall a program or uninstall software like you can on your phone or your, or your computer. But if you want to install a new program, if you want to build a new belief system or an operating system, um, you do that through behaviors. You don't do that through talking, talking to yourself or trying to logic it away. You do it through your actions. So, I mean, think about if we take a simple habit like exercise, it's not a simple habit, but if you take a habit like exercise and you don't do it and you try, you have this conversation with yourself over and over about you should do it, but I'm going to Netflix or I don't have time. Deep down, you're not the kind of person who exercises. Mm. But if you want to be that kind of person, then you put, what is it? You, you put some action behind it. You get out there and you do some exercise. And then that creates this line of code. I am someone who exercises. And that becomes your belief system or your operating system. Mm -hmm. And you think Does about the sense? beliefs totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. When you think about the beliefs that we have, again, going back to that relationship with ourselves, 
How good does it feel to have that belief in yourself that I'm the type of person who is important to yeah. me, that I can trust myself to be my own best advocate? Right. Well, and that's if you're not setting boundaries, if you're not saying no, if you're not prioritizing your needs, the, the experience that your mind is getting, the, the message that it's picking up is, I don't matter. So if you're someone who tends to be hard on yourself or you don't always like or love yourself, we need to look at those actions because you can change those actions. You know, I tell everybody that, that I work with, you know, in my private practice, they come in because of thoughts or feelings. I don't like these thoughts or I don't like these feelings. And I tell them, cool, I get that. But the only way I know to change them is to change your behaviors first. It's a backwards process. We change behavior that changes the thoughts and feelings. I love it. I love mm-hmm. it. Okay. So today we're going to be diving into it's, it's 10 different steps and they're all, some of them are shorter. Some of them are longer. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to buzz through them and give you the, um, instructions for each step. Please know though, pause this, this episode, take as much time with each step as you need to, because some of them really do take a chunk of time. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be talking about again, a calendar audit It's really this time that you set aside to reflect on how you're spending your time, who you're spending it with, what was working, what wasn't working, and how we can improve it. And our goal here at the end of this is to come out with what our quote unquote perfect week looks like. What does the best case scenario look like? Mm -hmm. Not because we're going to hit that target probably ever. But because we want a set of rules to follow and we want to know what we're aiming toward, because if we don't, that's when we get unintentional. That's when it's easy for other people to crowd out the time that we need for things that are meaningful to us. And that's really the biggest goal is for you to, over time, spend more and more of your quality time doing things that mean something to you. Well, and I think this year in particular, it's super important to do this. I know, April, you said you do this routinely, this is part of your practice. This is the first year I've done a formal calendar audit. I'm had been pretty intentional about my schedule when it comes to work uh, a couple of years ago when I started a private practice. But if you're like me, 2020 um, undid a lot of that work for me. So my calendar's kind of gotten away from me, my schedule, my routines. So I think this is the perfect time to sit down and reflect on what we had to do to survive 2020, but what create, uh, what bad habits that created Mm -hmm. and getting back on track and getting really intentional about moving forward and creating the conditions that help us thrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we dive into these, again, there are 10 different steps. The amazing thing is that step one is something we've already talked about. Step one is just putting your calendar audit on your calendar. Let's be realistic. If my phone doesn't squawk at me and tell me to do something, I'm not going to do it. And Mm -hmm. if I don't have something blocked off on my calendar, I am highly likely to break a boundary or to bend a rule or whatever and allow somebody to schedule over time that I mentally had set aside to do important work like this. So put it on your calendar, two hours, sometime in the next week or so. Mm -hmm. Here's why we're suggesting the next week or so. You're going to unveil a lot about yourself as you go through this exercise. You'll see as we go through the rest of these, the nine steps that follow this one, that we're going to hit on really important psychological strength principles like boundaries, like goals, like values, like self-care and self-love and identity, all of the relationships, potentially all of those things. Mm -hmm. This is all of the stuff that we do inside all of our programs. Right now we have three programs out. We've got Limitless, which is our program to help you um, change and rid yourself of the effects of self-limiting beliefs to bring yourself into being more of a person who is limitless and not limited by your mind. We have self-care by design. This is a quickie program to help you design an effective, custom, guilt-free self-care routine that supports you uniquely at your best. Mm -hmm. 
And we have Ascend. Ascend is our signature program. It goes through three modules, you, your mind, your life. It is the comprehensive big daddy of all programs that will help you understand yourself better, turn your mind into your most valuable asset and design your life from the inside out. Every single one of those programs for the next seven days, this is why we want you to do the audit in the next seven days. Every single one of those programs is 20% off right now. All you have to do is go to our website, peakmindpsychology.com, pick the program that you're interested in. And at checkout, just enter the code happy new year, all one word, all caps, happy new year. You'll get 20% off any of our programs until January 6th. So do this audit, figure out what you're going to need in the coming year and take mm -hmm. advantage of the sale because the sale is going to end on January 6th. I'm going to pause just in case there's anything you want to interject. Cause I'm like on fire over here. <laughs> no, keep going. And, and I'm excited. I hope the calendar audit is as uh, galvanizing for everybody else as it is for me and really sitting and thinking about what I want my year to look like because while a lot of it's out of our control, there's so much we can control. And, and it just means being intentional and having a clear direction. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. To me, life design is the tool you use when it's a situation you can control. And uh, psychological strength, the psych side of it is mm -hmm. what you use in a lot of cases when you can't. Like so mm -hmm. many of the principles that we teach there help you manage situations that aren't entirely inside of your control. It's, Absolutely. It's, you get all the, all the awesome stuff in our programs. So again, happy new year is that code until January 6th. Step two is also a really quick and easy one. So let's just hit it for a couple of seconds. You're going to need a few supplies. I would suggest getting obviously your calendar. If you have a physical calendar, a digital calendar, or some like me, if you're crazy and you have some combination of both, get those out. You'll need that. I would really suggest getting a set of the three by three post-it notes. So something that is a little bit larger. Sometimes I would suggest the little guys. In this case, I would suggest the three by threes. Um, your favorite pen or a Sharpie marker. I'm actually kind of a pen snob. So if you're like me and you <laughs> like very specific pens, get your favorite one and uh, get out a really good playlist that puts you in the mindset of being thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Something that feels maybe a little aspirational, something that feels like it belongs as the soundtrack to what you want the life you're going to live in 2021 20, to be. Get that playlist, whatever that happens to be. I just love your attention to detail when it comes to user experience, April. You, I mean, like... Since we've started collaborating, I mean, my, my workshops and presentations is leveled up because just they, even including that playlist, it, it makes such a difference in terms of what this calendar audit experience is going to feel like for you and getting you in that, like that optimal state of mind to really do the work. So you're not going through the motions and you're not half halfing it, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> censoring. Uh, so I just... I just love that. And I, I think music can be a really powerful way to add to that. And I find it helps me focus. Yay. And it, it brings out the emotional response that you want to have in this situation. Like it brings out the emotional response of being thoughtful, of being <laughs> aspirational, of being creative, whatever it is. So be thoughtful about what that playlist is. Step three is where we really get into the nitty gritty here. I want you to get out your calendar, look through the last at least six months. But like, if you're doing this for the first time, look through the last year mm -hmm. and don't worry about the fact that this has been a weird year because I would suggest whenever COVID quote unquote ends for you, whatever that means, like you're an adult, you decide for yourself. Don't let anybody else decide this for you. When you feel like things are going to start transitioning, um, really go back and do it again. So <laughs> as you go through those transition points, that's when I would encourage you to do this again. But for the time being, if you're new to this, just pick this, this last 12 months as it is. And I want you to flip through your calendar day by day and on one post-it note per quote unquote thing, I want you to write all the things that you do. Now I'm going to give you some examples. Maybe you have a morning routine that you do that should go on one post-it note, or maybe you want it on several. This is all up to you. Um, but 
go for more specific versus chunking too much stuff together. Maybe you have morning responsibilities, like you get your kids breakfast or you are responsible for taking them to school. Put that down. Maybe you yourself have a commute. Maybe you have a reoccurring team meeting that occurs at the same time every Tuesday morning. Write that down. Client meetings, sporting events, volunteer work, responsibilities in the evening, any, I mean, anything you can possibly think of, write everything that is on your calendar, write it down. Make sure you get, I mean, really we're going for volume here and we're going to be really exhaustive because what we want you to have at the end is this big stack of post-it notes that more or less make up the activities, both big and small that you've Mm -hmm. been doing over the last 12 months. So here we're just taking stock of what has been on our calendar. What's there? So April, just for clarification, because I mean, as you know, I don't use my calendar as, um, as the tool that it can be. And so there are big chunks of open time where I do other things, but they're not reflected in my calendar. So say someone's got with some of your examples, like morning drop off. Mm-hmm. and evening, get the kids ready for bed. If that stuff's not on the calendar, but it's a pretty regular activity, mm-hmm. should we put it on the post-it now? So I love that transition because step four is logging what's not there. Oh. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Yay. I didn't pay her to say that. <laughs> it actually worked out great. But step four is logging what's not there. And there are a couple of categories. Like as you look at that big stack you made in step three and you're like, huh, okay, well, what's not in this stack? There's a couple of categories that tend to fall there for people. Repetitive things tend to not be there. Um, household chores that are not your job or what you would typically see as your duties to do during the day. Sometimes those don't end up there. And things like exercise, self-care, hobbies, relaxation and leisure, fun, um, nights out with your significant other or your friends, those don't tend to fall on your calendar. So taking some time to write down and dump out again, one thing per post-it note, what Mm -hmm. isn't there, but that you, that you have done. And also what isn't there that you wish you were doing more of. Mm -hmm. So just now we're, I mean, again, so if you think about steps three and four, our biggest goal is to have this massive stack of post-it notes that comprise everything we could possibly imagine putting onto our calendar when we start designing. Don't worry if it is massive. We're going to figure that out. But like, just get it all down one thing per post-it note. Okay. And this is where, I mean, please pause this because this will take a while. So pause, hit your playlist, spend some time with your calendar and come back to us. Step five, we're going to start making chunks of things. And this is why I really like using post-it notes because you're going to get these chunks wrong over and over again, and you're going to reshuffle them and you're going to move them around. So it's nice if you can be working on a big surface and just sort of move these post-it notes around. But our job here is to start chunking those post-it notes together into categories. So I'm going to give you some dimensions to think about. Maybe all of your work-related stuff goes together. Maybe all of your kid-related stuff goes in another pile. Maybe, just for fun, within a bigger pile like your work pile, you have little mini sub-piles, stuff that is for things I get to control, calendar invites I control versus calendar invites I don't control. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's meetings versus heads-down work time. And these are just examples. Like, I don't know your life. You know your life. I don't know your life. So go through, get creative, sort, resort, create those categories and try to find ones that when you look at it, you're like, yeah, that's the stuff. That's the stuff I do. And it looks semi-organized right now. And that's the best I can give you for this step. You're going to need to spend some time on this one and really chunk things up. Don't be afraid to bust up chunks or, you know, mess things up a little bit and resort them. That's where the magic happens when you start to create categories for things. And there's no right or wrong on this. I think 
uh, getting into some of the like the sorting and the designy aspects of this. Uh, it's letting go of that. Am I doing it correctly? Am I doing it the right way? And sort of trusting yourself and um, giving some time to the process. Yep, absolutely. So we've got it on our calendar. Step one. Step two, we've got supplies. Step three, we made post-it notes for what is there. Step four, we made post-it notes for what's not. And step five, we have chunked them into categories. Mm -hmm. Step six, you've probably heard previous episodes of this podcast with me where I've talked about principles of life design. And one of them is if you're not being honest with anyone else, be honest with yourself bluntly honest, like painfully honest, like you drank a bottle of wine by accident and you are, your inhibitions are gone and you are as honest as you can possibly be that honest. Step six is to look at those piles and start to analyze. Ask yourself a set of questions, questions like when I look at these activities, how absolutely necessary were they? What about how absolutely necessary was it for me to do that activity? Mm -hmm. Did that activity drive value for me or did it drive value for someone else? How aligned to my values were these activities? Values, I mean, Ashley, you can say a lot about this, but like they're the, one of the biggest compasses that we have. Right. And if you're, if the way you spend your time does not line up with what is important to you, the result is going to be some sort of discord and that's, that's internal distress. It's ick. You're going to feel anxious or stressed or sad or guilty or angry. We've got to move in. What we mean by moving into alignment is that the way you are spending your time lines up with what's important to you. Mm -hmm. How passionate are you about those activities? How much energy does each one take? And be honest with these. There's no right or wrong answers here, but just be super honest. How much energy does each activity take? What skills does each one rely on? In a perfect world, which activities would you eliminate or delegate to someone else and to whom? Who could do them instead of you? Mm -hmm. And is there a change that I could make to improve those activities? And this is another step. So step six, and these are just some sample questions to get you started. Step six is this analysis of those chunks of post-it notes. Take some time with this, pause us, put your playlist back on and go through and be absolutely honest about each of those chunks of your post-it notes and get to know each of them because we're going to start optimizing in the mm -hmm. next step. Well, and when you're analyzing part of being honest is not just going with your knee jerk response, because for a lot of things, it's going to say, yeah, this was absolutely necessary and it had to be done by me, mm -hmm. but question, right? Like that's, that's one of the big things that we hit in psych strength is being aware of what your mind is saying to you and learning to question it because it's not always fact. It's not always truth. And we need to be really looking at things of, how much of this is just obligation mm -hmm. things we feel, or, well, I guess it would be more that we think we need to do or that we don't have any choice over when we do, it's just not always an easy choice. So really pay attention as you're analyzing to those thoughts that are coming up, those answers that are coming up and push on them a little bit. We've talked about in previous episodes as well, the, something we call the committee in your mind. It's this, mm -hmm. these voices in our mind that, tell us what we should do or that, oh, they're going to be mad at you. And no, right. if you don't do it, no one else is going to. And all those voices, we hit those voices hard in ascend because mm -hmm. of this, because they control us and they mess us up and they cause us to do things that are not in alignment. So a um, little plug for that. If you want to use your coupon there, it's a really good use, uh, but you'll hear those voices in that step. All right. Step seven, we're going to start to redesign. So we're going to start to think about um, how we might do things a little bit better. We're not yet creating our ideal, but how can we do things a little bit better? So I'm going to give you some prompts to think about again. Which of those activities in your mind, this, this should is defined by you. Which of those activities should go together? 
on your calendar because maybe they require the same set of skills. There's something called context switching that is a real thing. And if there is, there are, there are a few things that are just killers of efficiency and context switching is one of them. So I'll give you a, just a personal example. Half of my day job is spent in creative psychology endeavors like peak mind and this podcast. And half of my day job is spent doing writing code, like literally writing code. Those are not the same brain. They do not require the same brain. And I can't pick up and put down and flip between those two things and do them well. I can't, I can't do it. And so I have to chunk together. My coding goes together. My content creation and creative work goes together and they don't happen back to back because I, I just can't do it. That context mm-hmm. switch is too hard. So which activities should go together because they require the same skills? How about this one? Which ones require the most energy and when do you have energy? That's such a good one. Are you a night owl or are you a morning person? Yeah, that's such a good one to consider. And think about what, so introverts, extroverts, you may feel differently about this. Those meetings that for some people may require no energy at all. They may fill your cup up and make you feel great. And other people, they may drain you to your last ounce. Think about where those fit compared to where your heads down work time should fit. When Mm -hmm. are you most effective at each? And just think about that. And then I want you to think about, you know, I asked who, who does that activity benefit? Does it drive value for you or for someone else? Are you balancing that? Are you seeing yourself as at least as important as Mm -hmm. other people? not saying you're going to, you're going to be more important than everyone else, but are you at least as important as everybody else on your calendar? You got some things that benefit you on there. These are just a few questions. And again, you know, your life. So think about that, um, and feel free to redesign and ask additional questions of yourself. So step seven, it's probably going to require some iteration. You're probably again, going to want to pause us, go through that spend some time with it before moving on to step eight, which is where we're going to start creating our ideal calendar. So in a perfect world, if you had a hundred percent control, I know you don't, but let's just pretend for funsies, you have a hundred percent control. You can design your own calendar. That's what we're going to try to do. Now, I suggest starting with a little dose of reality. And this is why my calendar has repetitive things on it. I know because of just how our life is that 99% of mornings I will be getting up with our kids. I have that blocked in on my calendar because under no way am I going to accept a meeting when I see on my calendar that I'm already going to be doing something Mm -hmm. at that time. So I like putting those things on there because I, I cannot be trusted. I cannot trust myself in those situations. Um, I'm just bad at that. So um, put in things that are, there's just like school lets out at 3.30 and I have to be there to pick them up. Things like that, that are just literal non-negotiables. Like it eventually will be nighttime. You'll have to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. But the rest of it, go back to your redesign in step seven and slot things in ideally when they would happen. Yeah. I love the, it's the magic wand question. Like, right. If I could wave a magic wand and tomorrow you wake up and your life is perfect, what does it look like? And in this case, it's not, how does it feel? Um, what are you like on the inside? It's if I had a video camera following you around, what would I see you doing? And when would you be doing it? And like April saying, this is just the ideal with some real like reality anchors in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So go through, get down what your ideal schedule is. Again, our goal is to get the ideal state down on paper because we want something to shoot for. We want a target to just point at. We're probably not going to ever hit a hundred percent, but if you can get like a solid B minus, a solid B minus that is intentional is so much better than a (laughs) plus that sneaks up on you. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to feel amazing. Yes. 
Okay. So that's step eight. We are going to create our ideal calendar mess. Again, post-it notes are amazing. Slot them down on the table or on a big work surface, get them into an ideal calendar, and then maybe draw that out somewhere. Step nine, and this is my favorite. This is the type A Enneagram three Capricorn. You can call it whatever you want. It all just means like I'm really kind of uh, detail oriented in this way. Uh, I like rules because otherwise I won't do it. So step nine is to create some rules. It's to jot down some, call them general rules as a general rule. So some examples are just from my own life. As a general rule, I'm most productive in the morning. So I only have meetings in the afternoons. I need my mornings for work time. So I try really hard to schedule meetings in the afternoons. How about I have a big writing project this year. So as a general rule, Tuesdays and Fridays will be devoted to writing. Mm -hmm. My email inbox is a frequent distraction for me. So as a general rule, I only check email twice per day during my designated times. Oh my God. Put on my calendar. Side note, if you can do that, oh my gosh. And you get through the initial anxiety about missing out on something or what will people think if you take too long to respond. But if you can really chunk your email into two times a day, your life will feel fundamentally different. Trust me. And you know what? Let me do that. What? Honestly, I like at first I was that anxious ball of crazy. Uh Like my, my day-to-day job is consulting and people want you to respond and whatever. In my mind, I, I just kept telling myself, how do they know you're not in a meeting? Right. They know you didn't have four meetings this morning. There right. are like lots of days that I do. How do they know what my calendar is? They yeah. Don't. They don't. Well, and, and this is one of those, I worked so hard to have a personal rule. I love personal rules too, of just it, because it takes the decision-making out of the moment. Yes, it it's I've already made this decision. I don't even have to waste my decision-making bandwidth in that moment. It used to pre COVID. I see patients three days a week, period. I check my email twice a day, period, and none on the weekends. And I was doing that. I went from all day, seven days a week to twice a day, like mid-morning and 5 p.m. and none on the weekends. And life felt so nice. So that's what I will be getting back to in 2021. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. So get those general rules, write them down. Mm -hmm. Not only write them down, but this is my huge suggestion. My life changed when I did this, get them in your calendar. Meaning I started to block off, you know how you can like put an appointment in your calendar, but have it show that time as free. So like other people, like if you're at work and you use out Microsoft outlook, let's say you can put something on your calendar, but you can show to other people who are looking at your calendar. It looks like you're free during that time. I do this to myself because it's not that I need other people to see, oh, April's busy, you know, 24 seven, but I need a visual reminder on my calendar that if a meeting comes in during that time and it overlaps with this chunk of, you know, this, this placeholder that I put on my calendar that says work time. It's not that I never accept that meeting. It's that that meeting request comes in on my work time and it prompts me to decide intentionally, are you going to break this rule or not? Mm. So it's like by deciding no. Yes. It's a speed bump. It's like, don't say yes. Are you sure? Are you sure? Can someone else go? Do you have to be there? Does it Mm -hmm. have to be an hour? Can we push back Mm -hmm. and give an alternate time? Most of the time people will accommodate. They will. Yeah. Yeah. So general rules, write them down, get them on your calendar. And step 10 is what the last step in every design process always is iterate and adjust. See if it's working for you. Do you need additional rules? Do you need caveats? Do you need differences on the weekend versus weekdays? Are there certain important people who get to break the rules like crazy? Are there people who super don't and you never (laughs) break the rules for them? Whatever it happens to be, adjust as you go with the goal of iterating towards something that feels better and better. Mm-hmm. So that's step 10. I highly, highly encourage you, as I mentioned, spend some time in the next week, get this done for yourself. It was eye opening to me. And 
if it did one thing, so much of the work, like when people say, oh, what do you do in peak mind and blah, blah. What I say to them is the fastest thing that I can give somebody is self-awareness and self-understanding, which immediately tends to breed almost this relief. Like I remember the first time I did this calendar audit, I was feeling so stretched thin, like Mm -hmm. time confetti is the example I would use like tiny little itty bitty, like five minute chunks here and there, like tiny little pieces of paper. Someone (laughs) threw some confetti at my calendar and that was my free time. It was crazy. And then I did this time audit and I looked at it and I was like, Oh, I'm not crazy. It's actually worse than I thought. Oh, great. Okay. Well, I can give myself a break that I'm not crazy and weak. It's worse than I thought. So you will feel amazing. Yes. Validated. Yes. And then I think for me, it's, when I do stop and reflect on things and getting honest, because it's with the self-awareness, we're not nearly as self-aware as we think we are. And we lie to ourselves so often and not always intentionally and not always again with that awareness. So really being able to, to look critically um, and objectively at how I spend my time for me, it's, Oh, I'm white wasting or I'm squandering a lot of it in ways that really don't, help me show up at my best, don't help me progress forward with my goals. And if I'm not really intentional, I slip into lazy habits that actually detract from my happiness and my mood. And so for me, it's really nice to to be real and to set those rules for myself and, and create some of these routines and the structure to really make life feel better. Yeah, absolutely. So I hope you all can see what a powerful exercise this can be to do even once a year, but I would encourage a couple of times. And again, looking ahead to when COVID ends, definitely consider it then. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, please check out our programs. We don't run sales like this very often, but they are all 20% off right now through January 6th, just one week. Um, Any program that you want at checkout, you can enter the code HAPPY NEW YEAR all caps, all one word. Um, I'll put that in this episode description as well um, with some links to our programs. You can enter that code, get 20% off of any of those programs um, to your heart's content. We would love to see you in them in 2021. We've got some amazing things coming. Cool. Thank you guys so much for joining us with this last episode of 2020, last episode of season four. (laughs) We are on to season five next year. Woo! I know. Oh, we have fun stuff coming. I know. We have such fun stuff coming. You're going to die when you hear next week's guest. So good. So good. But I won't ruin it. Um, Anyway, thank you all for making this such an incredible year, albeit weird year, but uh, incredible as well. And we'll be back in 2021 with some more amazing content. Have a good new year and we'll see, we'll see you next year. It's a simple fact that nearly everyone in the world could benefit from building psychological strength, but not everyone will put in the time and effort to do so. But today you did. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of building psychological strength. Now, if you're interested in building the mental toughness, confidence, and resilience you need to thrive through life's ups and downs, visit us at www.peakmindpsychology.com. Also, if there's someone in your life who could benefit from this episode, please share it with them. And if you yourself found this episode valuable, meaning if you took away even one insight that you can use to build psychological strength in your own life, we would so appreciate it if you would drop us a rating and a review on iTunes. The thing is, the more ratings and reviews we have, the easier it is to get this powerful and important content out to the people who need to hear it. Remember, your mind can be your most valuable asset or your biggest liability, and you get to choose. So choose wisely, my friend, and I'll see you next time on Building Psychological Strength.